Earlier this past week, I was with a couple of my brother priests, and we were just visiting with each other and talking about, you know, the new news of the new bishop that's coming and kind of sharing, you know, some excitement, but questions and kind of wondering, you know, what this, what's going to happen. And during that visit, we were thinking about, of course, Good Shepherd Sunday is coming up, which is now today. And one of my brother priests uh, shared a video with me, a very short video, about two minutes. And the title of the video was, Do Sheep Only Obey Their Master's Voice? Do Sheep Only Obey Their Master's Voice? And I don't know the language that was being spoken in the video, and I don't know where the country was. But anyway, it was a very simple uh, little experiment. Three individuals were able to go up to a flock, you know, from a distance, and they were allowed to try and call the flock to come to them. And I guess they all had kind of the same kind of call. They were probably taught the call to use. And one by one, they would go up to the fence line and call down to the valley to the sheep. And after a few minutes, they'd kind of laugh and walk away because the sheep are totally ignoring them. Then, of course, the the farmer comes forward, the owner of the sheep, and he begins to call. And immediately, their heads begin to pop up. The sheep turn towards his voice and... As a big flock, they just start running towards this man, this shepherd. The point of the video is clear, that sheep listen to the voice of their shepherd. Sheep listen to the voice of their shepherd. This, the fourth Sunday of Easter, is, as I said, known as Good Shepherd Sunday, primarily because of the theme in the gospel where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And then why he's the good shepherd comes the very next verse. A good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Now, most of us have probably little or no contact with any shepherds or their trade. But even the most attentive shepherds would not lay their life down for their sheep. Because, you see, shepherds guard, yes, protect and feed their flock. But because it's totally, that is their livelihood. They have to protect their flock or they don't have wool. If you don't have wool to sell, you have no trade. If you have no sheep, you may not have food. And so even a shepherd on occasion would take a sheep from his flock and slaughter it to feed his family. So laying his life down for the sheep doesn't really make any sense to the profession of being a shepherd. But it is how Jesus reveals how he is the good shepherd Because with Christ, there's absolutely no self-interest. Totally selfless love. The point about the image of shepherd and sheep is not the literal shepherds and the literal sheep. And the point is not that the good shepherd would put his life above that of animals. The point is about the shepherd's relationship to us. His relationship to the flock. That he cares for it, which is us. We are the flock. And he will do what no other human being would do, which is to lay his life down for his sheep. And he feeds us with the Eucharist by laying his life down both on the cross and at the altar. And so at the heart of this relationship between shepherd and sheep is the voice of the shepherd. Everything depends on the voice of the shepherd. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock, one shepherd. They will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. And so what is it that unifies the sheep? What makes it one flock? Is that they hear the voice of the shepherd calling to them. Sheep listen to the voice of their shepherd. And so on Good Shepherd Sunday, we we know that we hear the voice of our shepherd in many ways. Our shepherd, Jesus Christ. We hear his voice in the scriptures, in the word proclaimed at mass. We hear the voice of the shepherd through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, through spiritual companionship with friends who guide us to Christ. We hear the voice of the shepherd in our conscience that leads us to choose the good But today we focus primarily on how we hear the voice of Christ through the shepherds of the church, the bishops and pastors. On May 29th, 
we will be receiving a new bishop, Bishop-elect Michael Martin. And on that day, we will offer thanksgiving and praise to God for Bishop Peter Jugas, who has carried the burden of the office of bishop for 20 years. He's a man of prayer, on fire with love for the Eucharist, our lady, and for the entire Church of Charlotte. He ordained me a deacon and a priest, and I will forever be grateful to him. At the same time, we will be welcoming a new shepherd. In this historic time of transition in our diocese, it can be easy for us to feel some unrest or even worry. Some may be wondering, what's this new guy going to do? How is he going to lead? What's his liturgical style? What are his theological leanings? Is he going to be a liberal? a conservative, a progressive. Or maybe we can feel so distant from the office of bishop and looking at them as nothing but CEO administrators who are totally disconnected from our life as Catholics. And in the light of the scandals in the church, it can be easy to not have any regard for bishops at all. To just say, I don't care who wears the pointy hat, I'm going about my life. These questions and concerns are common and normal in this day and age, especially in the time of any transitioning in the church's leadership. But it is an opportune time for us, my brothers and sisters, to take a moment on this Good Shepherd Sunday to understand what the church says and teaches about bishops. And we will hear primarily that bishops are called to be shepherds. They're called to be shepherds. The Second Vatican Council teaches and declares that Jesus Christ, the eternal shepherd, established his holy church, having sent forth the apostles, as he himself had been sent by the Father, and he willed that their successors, namely the bishops, should be shepherds in his church, even to the consummation of the world, and in order that the episcopate itself might be one and undivided, he placed blessed Peter over the other apostles and instituted in him a permanent and visible source and foundation of unity of faith and communion. So we learn that bishops are shepherds and they are placed as successors of the apostles by Christ himself. This is willed by Jesus. And Peter, the bishop of Rome, has his successors in the popes and thereby they are placed over the bishops and in communion with them and form a communion and a unity within the church and through their teaching authority, which we know to be the magisterium. The Second Vatican Council teaches further, bishops therefore with their helpers, the priests and deacons, have taken up the service of the community, presiding in the place of God over the flock. Presiding in the place of God over the flock, whose shepherds they are. The Vatican Council continues, how are these men, how are these bishops shepherds? They are shepherds because as teachers they teach doctrine, priests for sacred worship, and ministers for governing. governing. Therefore, the Sacred Council teaches that the bishops, by divine institution, have succeeded to the place of the apostles as shepherds of the church, And he who hears them hears Christ, and he who rejects them rejects Christ and him whom Christ sent. So we understand that the bishops are there because Christ has chosen them and has sent them. And as sheep we are to listen, to listen to their voice, to receive them because it is Christ who sends them. And if we reject them, we reject Christ and him whom Christ sent. We listen then to the voice of bishops not because they're liberal or conservative or whatever label we put on them, but because they possess the power of the Holy Spirit. They possess an office instituted by Christ himself to be successors of his apostles. So we wish to listen and to hear their voice so as not to reject them or reject the one who sent Christ. And so bishops are placed in the service of the church to teach, to sanctify, and to govern This comes with their ordination and, in fact, their consecration. With the laying on of hands at the ritual of consecration, they receive the power of the Holy Spirit to exercise their office in the name of Christ. 
being to teach, the catechism clarifies, bishops with priests as co-workers have their first task to preach the gospel of God to all men in keeping with the Lord's command. They are to be heralds of the faith who draw new disciples to Christ. And so we can hear that even in Bishop-elect Michael Martin's press conference when he was named the next Bishop of Charlotte. He shared his time many years in campus ministry, a man whose heart is already on fire for evangelization, to share the gospel at every corner of the diocese, especially in eagerness to young people, to young adults on college campuses. And so the bishops draw then new disciples to Christ. Why? Because they are authentic teachers of the apostolic faith endowed with the, with the authority of Christ. And simply put, the voice of the bishop is the voice of the shepherd. And as sheep, we ought to hear his, heed his voice following his instruction. And many voices in our society clamor for our attention, and social media personalities are always looking for a large following. Just look at the way it all works. You click follow, 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 follow. It's all about following somebody and their voice. But we have a gift in the church with the office of bishop, because Jesus gives us shepherds in order to hear his voice, keeping us as one flock of Christ. And through his shepherds, Jesus draws us to himself. Their second role is to sanctify. They teach, and they are to sanctify. The Catechism says, the bishop is the steward of the grace of the supreme priesthood, especially in the Eucharist, which he offers personally, or whose offering he assures through the priests, his co-workers. The Eucharist is the center of the life of the church. The bishop and priests sanctify the church by their prayer and work, by their ministry of word and of the sacraments. The bishops draw us closer to Christ, most especially in the celebration of the Eucharist. And Bishop Jigas taught us so much about the love of the Eucharist in <laughs> nearly 20 Eucharistic Congresses. So bishops draw us closer to Christ, especially through the Eucharist. They teach, they sanctify, and they're finally called to govern. So by their counsels, their exhortations, and example, says the Catechism, the bishops edify in the spirit of service, which is that of their master. Most importantly, their authority must be exercised in communion with the whole church under the guidance of the Pope. So they can do nothing and teach nothing apart from the Holy Father. They are in communion with the Holy Father, therefore keeping us in communion with the Holy Father, and it is only the Holy Father who chooses bishops. In summary, the Catechism says the Good Shepherd is the model and form of the bishop's pastoral office. Conscious of his own weaknesses, the bishop can have compassion for those who are ignorant and erring. He should not refuse to listen to his subjects whose welfare he promotes as of his very own children. Further, it says, the faithful should be closely attached to the bishop as the church is to Jesus Christ and as Jesus Christ is to the Father. That is amazing. In these few lines, the bishop's role is to be spiritual father, looking at all of his subjects as if his own very children, and the faithful, the sheep, all of us are to be so closely attached to the bishop of the church as Jesus is attached to the church and as Jesus Christ is to the Father. That's amazing. St. Ignatius says, let all follow the bishop as Jesus Christ follows his father. Let no one do anything concerning the church in separation from the bishop. So the bishop is ultimately called to be both shepherd and father to his flock. And so we must therefore reaffirm the need for us to offer our hearts in gratitude to God for the ministry of Bishop Peter Jugas and to pray for Bishop-elect Michael Martin as he prepares to undertake the immense and seemingly impossible task of being the fifth bishop of Charlotte. And this time of transition is also an opportunity for us to renew and give over our respect and obedience to our new shepherd. As true sheep, as true sheep, we should be willing to listen to his voice. 
And it's easy for all of us, myself most included, to fall into the traps of ideology, to be polemical, to adhere more to polarizing identities within the church and the culture that more align with political and cultural realities rather than the Catholic Church. All too often, we organize ourselves not as a flock, but into small camps and factions by calling ourselves conservative Catholics, liberal Catholics, progressive Catholics, traditional Catholics. But the Catholics, the Catholics that the church needs most and has always needed is faithful Catholics. That is the Catholic that the church is always seeking, one who is faithful, one who doesn't simply embrace the portions of the faith that align to a political or philosophical leaning, but rather seeking always to cling to the whole teaching of Christ, to seek only to be sheep of his one flock. Sheep listen to the voice of the shepherd. And so what determines whether we are truly sheep? Sheep listen to the voice of the shepherd. If we're sheep, we listen to the voice of the shepherd. This means also that we have to recognize the voice of hirelings in our day. These voices in our culture that have literally large followings on social media and who care really nothing about our true well-being but only ratings and popularity. And it's very simple. The more followers, the more money they receive. So let us make sure that we're listening to the voice of the good shepherd who speaks to us through the Holy Father, the bishops and pastors, always pray for us, who are all in union with the Lord. Jesus is calling us to be one flock, and soon the voice of Christ will be heard and transferred to a new shepherd, and sheep listen to the voice of the shepherd. And through the voice of his shepherds, Jesus Christ will draw us to himself. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.